Hey, what's up? It's Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, we're continuing on to episode number 13 of our Ecto for Beginners series. I did two versions of episode 12 and deleted one of them, so it is really episode number 13. We're just going to jump right into it. Last time, we went over how to set up change sets. And we did that for users. And it was a reasonably complex change set with uh, a custom validation. And it's pretty similar doing the other change sets. So I did them off screen, to save you some time. But I'm going to touch on a few key things. So tags were very straightforward. All they have is a title. That's all that's required. They do have associations, but they don't have any foreign keys on them. Other things have tag IDs on them. Links, same kind of deal. They have URLs. They have many bookmarks and taggings, but uh, it's bookmarks that have link IDs on them. And links don't have any foreign keys. They just have a URL. Link tags are a three-way join table, and um, they join links, tags, and users. And one thing to keep in mind or to be careful about is if you don't have these foreign keys in the list of allowed attributes in the cast, then they will be discarded. So if you don't add these, then your change set can't update them. And by default, they are not added in Phoenix generators. That's because there are a number of different ways to work with this. Um, this is not strange at all, but it's kind of up to each person on each project to decide what they're going to do. Um, finally, the uniqueness constraint is another interesting thing. Um, it's, it's basically the same deal in bookmarks. Bookmarks also are a join table. They also have foreign keys, and they also have a uniqueness constraint across multiple fields. So let's compare that with users. Users have uh, unique emails and unique usernames. But there's no relationship between these two constraints. They're just, both of them have to be unique. In the case of bookmarks, um, the users aren't unique. Like the same user may have bookmarked many things and the links aren't unique on their own. The same link may have been bookmarked by many users, but the combination is. So the same user can't be you know, bookmarking the same page repeatedly. I would just fill up the database and doesn't make much sense. We have the same constraint in the database. So if you have this uniqueness, or if you have a unique index in the database and you don't have the constraint in the change set, then Ecto won't stop this before going to the database. Like you'll actually try to insert something that violates a constraint and the database won't let you and it'll throw an error. But if you have the constraint in the change set, then you'll catch the problem sooner and you can, uh, you can customize uh, how that, that error is displayed because you get error data back with a change set. So it's probably a good idea if you, have a, uh, if you have a unique index or some kind of constraint in your database, uh, you, you should probably have that same constraint in Ecto. The other way around might not be true. There might be something that you're not enforcing the database level because you might want to change or it's, you know, it's more exploratory, but you do want to enforce it at the change set level. So it's, it's really a bit of discretion is possible there. Now let's look at the other ways. I said there were some other ways of working with this associated data. Um, there are some functions built in like uh, put ASOC, you can just put an association onto a onto a, a change set, or cast ASOC is is the the cast version of it, and these are fairly useful, and I'll show you how from our example queries. So this set of example queries, been building up throughout this series, has served as two things. One, I've been using it like a seed file. And I'm just using this to rebuild the database between each episode and sometimes during them. And two, I'm 
been using this to document the various ways of using Ecto and working with the database as we go through. But notice that all these, uh, all of these inserts, all these batch inserts, were just a list of a whole bunch of records, and then we just put them in the database at once. And when we get to the join table, this is uh, well, it's, it's not the uh, the clearest interface to be working with uh, as a human. Uh, I mean, there may be cases where it's one API talking to another, and this is perfect, but. Um, since we we often have uh, one or more of these associations at our disposal, it'd be nice if we can use those to build up the uh, the join table struct. So let's have a look. Actually, let's start IEX. Uh, no, let's run our our queries because right now it's an empty database. So mix run example queries. We'll run through all of that. Now we'll start up IEX and we don't have Phoenix or anything. So just IEX mix. All right. First thing we'll do is we'll get the user Sam out of the database. I don't remember uh, what the ID was. So we'll just do repo dot get by. I do remember what his username was. So username Sam. Okay. We've got a user. Now let's build up an association for him. Uh, we're going to create a new bookmark. Bookmark, uh, we can just create with build ASOC. So bookmark is going to equal ecto.build ASOC. Sam, so just pass in the struct and then the association, which in this case is bookmarks. Uh, we're only creating one bookmark. It's just the name of the association is bookmarks. Uh, quick warning, if you're using put ASOC, that will actually replace the entire collection. Build ASOC is when you're making one new one. Put ASOC will uh, replace what's already there. So you might end up uh, getting an error depending on your, your uh, uh, rules on delete all. Or you might just replace all the bookmarks with a single one, which you don't want. All right, so we have this bookmark struct and notice that it has a user ID now of four. That's because we built the association from Sam and he, his user ID or his ID is four. So user ID here is four. Um, everything else is nil because we haven't given it any other data. We can though. So from right here, we could actually give it uh, the entire struct of everything we know about the bookmark. We could, we could give it, uh, we, could, we could actually pass in a link with, with a link struct we've already made, or we could pass in the title. And this can be map syntax, or it can be keyword syntax. I usually go with the keyword syntax because it's, it's uh, terser. Uh, we'll just do title is a site with lots of tech books. This bookmark is going to be manning.com, which is a publisher of many, many tech books, including uh, Elixir in Action and Phoenix in Action. You see now our bookmark struct is a little bit more fleshed out. This ID is fine. ID will get auto-generated when we put it in the database, but the link is a bit more of a problem. That's because it's an entirely other struct and maybe we haven't even created the link yet. Let's take a look at link, because put ASOC works on a change set. So we're, let me clear so we can see more of the screen. Uh, we'll do change set equals change bookmark. And this is ecto.change set.change, and we've imported ecto.change set. So we can just type change. Here we go, we have a valid change set. Next thing we're gonna do is use put ASOC. So this one we'll just call uh, uh, change set two is put ASOC, which is also on ecto.change set, the change set, and the association, which is a link, and then the information the link needs. 
in this case, that's just the URL, which is HTTPS manning.com. And now this is kind of interesting. We have a change set and in its changes, we have a link and that has another change set. So we have a change set inside a change set and notice that they're both valid. So we can just do repo dot insert uh, change set number two and boom. And we now have a new bookmark with a new link, neither of which existed before. And we can get Sam back from the database. So uh, Sam equals repo dot get number uh, user number four. And actually we're gonna put this in parentheses and re and preload ecto dot preload. Let's get the bookmarks and the links under the bookmarks ecto dot pre oh, repo dot preload. And we can see that he now has a bookmark with a link to manning.com and the appropriate description. So I know that was a, a fair amount to go over pretty quickly, but just basically build ASOC will make the struct with the associated data and you can pass more data to it. Put ASOC will replace a struct or an entire collection of structs. The last two permutations I wanna go over are cast ASOC, which is quite a bit like put ASOC, except it's the cast version going through the change set and put change. So this is code from one of my apps and it's the create user function. And we have two versions of it. One is an OAuth flow and the other is default. In the default flow, we are basically going through, this is, this is already stuff that we had imported before. So we're basically calling the user change set. And then we're using cast ASOC to add the change set for the associated credential. This is a lot like we use put ASOC to put the whole uh, change set for links into the bookmark struct that we were working on or into the bookmark change set. And one other wrinkle here is I passed in a custom one using with to specify which change set function to use. By default, if you don't specify it, then you'll just use the name of the struct dot change set. It'll just assume that you have a change set in your schema file. And finally, put change is pretty straightforward. It's not going through another change set. It's just manually adding a change. So in this case, I have an attribute called is onboarded. I set it to true if they come through the OAuth flow because the OAuth flow is already confirming their email address. So that is a quick look at how you can work with change sets and associated data in a number of ways. And Hope you found this series helpful. I will see you next time.